Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, I'm sure you're familiar with the Danish author Hans Christian Andersen that gave so many fairy tales to children in Denmark, in Hong Kong, and throughout the entire world. The stories of the Little Mermaid, the Ugly Duckling, and the Nightingale. In the latter, Hans Christian Andersen tells us, the emperor of China is a China man. And as you most likely know, and everyone around him is a Chinaman too. The emperor's palace was the wonder of the world. It was made entirely of fine porcelain, extremely expensive, but so delicate that you would touch it only with the greatest of care. In the garden, the rarest flowers bloomed, and to the prettiest were tied little tiny silver bells, which tinkled so that no one could pass without noticing them. Yes, everything was arranged according to plan in the emperor's garden, though how far and how wide it extended, not even the gardener knew. Hans Christian Andersen wrote this 150 years ago, but I do believe that it still more or less describes how we as Danes seize Hong Kong, China, and Asia. We still marvel of the wonders of Asia, and we cherish the immense beauty of your countries, while we also still do recognize that everything in the emperor's garden is arranged due to a plan, a very large plan. Having established how we from Denmark see your countries of wonders, allow me to proceed to try and convey to you an impression of Denmark, this year's partner country of Business of Design Week. I lean on yet a Danish author in conveying to you Denmark and the, Danish society, uh, the Design Society Denmark. The author is Karen Blixen. You might know her as Isaac Dinesen, and maybe you even saw the movie Out of Africa, where Meryl Streep and Robert Redford fought really hard to speak English in a very Danish way. Karen Blixen tells us that there's one and only one really important responsibility in life, and that responsibility is to respond. To me, this describes the very best of Danish design, the ability of Danish design to respond. Our first wave of now globally celebrated designers came around quite late, because in Denmark, Industrial society came around quite late. Consequently, our first designers brought the very best of craftsmanship directly from the agricultural society and into industrial design. They were very brilliant carpenters, weavers, potters, potters and they turned designers and they responded to the needs of the industrial society. They provided us with the furniture needed for the many people moving into the cities, the household objects to ease the work of the housewife that we wanted to go into the workforce, and the factory buildings, <coughs> residential areas, and cities offices that the new era craved. They used new industrial technologies and combined them with simplicity and functionality to create responses to the need of society in terms of mainly tangible products. The, the resulting products were designed for the average Danish family. Many of these products have become iconic and are still very much in use and in production. And exactly this forms the basis of what we call Design Society Denmark. 
you see, if you go to Denmark, and we would really much like you to come, you will, in every home you visit, find several design icons. You'll find porcelain, lamps, chairs, textiles, and flatwares that you in many other countries only find in very exclusive design boutiques. Or if you go to a school, a public library, a hospital, you'll find furniture, curtains, thermos, buildings, and appliances with a high level of design quality. And if you stroll our parks or our streets, you'll find old and new urban furniture that you would normally find at MoMA as well. In Denmark, you'll find design throughout our society. Design is distributed throughout everything to a degree where it has become part of, our, of who we are, part of our genes. And on that basis of the genes that these renowned designers infused into us, we have now moved forward as a design society. The beautiful and simple household objects are still very much in demand in Denmark. But society has changed, and the demands that designers respond to have changed accordingly. Now we live in a world of global connectivity, a world of cross-border, large-scale challenges that poses the largest threat to our way of life as any ever. And at the same time, the largest possibility ever of creating a livable and sustainable world. These challenges of the contemporary global society are now responded to by Danish designers. Danish designers work to respond to climate challenges, to ever-growing cities, to welfare needs and energy crisis, to healthcare demands and the need of mobility in cities. We work to sustain nature and our natural resources. We work to teach our kids how to design sustainable responses to the challenges that will be facing them in their world of the future. We work with our companies to understand the triple bottom line potential of this kind of design. We work with our public sector to secure better design services and systems. And as opposed to sole working designers of the industrial society, we seldom work alone. We work in teams, we work across borders, we work across industries, and we work across, across cultures. And we will continue to do this in the years to come to press forward towards a livable and likable world of sustainable solutions. I do hope that I, by this, have been able to convey to you how we work with design, design in Denmark, because we will so very much like to work with you today, tomorrow, to design sustainable response to the challenges facing our worlds and our societies. We believe that you, if you have the ability to respond, you also have the responsibility to do so. Thank you for welcoming us here. We hope you will enjoy the program.